Where did it go? And I keep getting the same answer. The same answer, well, well, Mark, he got hurt. It is totally fair to not be sold on the future of Brock Purdy. Yep, that's all true. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not asking for you to believe that Brock Purdy is the next Tom Brady. I just want to know where your excitement went. We were here last year. We are here every day. The 49ers went on an epic winning streak and got all the way to the NFC title game before many of us believe we were robbed of a chance to see the game that we were all waiting and hoping to see. And in that time, on a week-in and week-out basis, we were amazed. We were excited. We were surprised. We were all the things that you would normally be when a seventh-round, last pick in the draft rookie gets tossed into duty and looks like he does. Yes, the backdrop was we thought the season was over. And then it turned out it wasn't. And that excited people. And then the season ended. And through a bunch of different events, one of them injury, one of them the sort of lack of feeling like the Trey Lance situation was fair, plus just the reality of, wait a minute, what we saw couldn't actually be real, right? We've allowed all of that to work ourselves into a spot where a bunch of people are just like, Brock Purdy cannot be who we're putting all, We're not putting all of our eggs into that basket, are we? Where did the excitement go? It's a great question. I'm not sure I'm fully going down the road with you that the excitement is gone okay. at the level in which you've stated it here to, right. to begin the segment. I, I think people are excited. I, I feel like it's, it's almost... It, it that's not the the task at hand right now, or that's not that's not the matter that 49er fans are, are is at the most you know in front of them right now. Right now, it's this backup job, and I think there's also some lost in translation maybe in the off season of well, Brock Purdy played last year because two guys in front of him got hurt, and one of them was Trey Lance, who a year ago was the number one quarterback on this date. I think there's just a I would say less than half, but a strong enough percentage of 49er fans who thought, well, wouldn't Trey just be the one coming into this year? Because he was the one last year, even though Brock. So I, I think there was maybe a lack of understanding over the, the competition word that was used for, throughout the offseason. I think a lot of people, we talked about this yesterday, believe that the competition was for the one spot, when in reality the competition was for the two spot, and then everybody shows up at training camp, and it's like, oh, Brock's good to go. He's the one. <laughs> Trey's got to I mean, that was Sam surprising. That was, you remember that day? Yeah. A couple weeks ago, everyone was like, wait a minute, what do you mean Brock Purdy's just going to come practice right at the start of camp? Yeah. That's you, not, nobody thought that was going to happen. Ahead of schedule, right, but nobody wanted right. to say ahead of schedule, but ahead of schedule. Ahead of schedule. And so I, I think there were uh, – all of that cobbled together is why – I think Purdy has been backburnered to this point, and the focus has been so much on the others. And and we alluded to it a little bit in the in the changeover. Just the fact that I, I do think there's also a small percentage of 49er fans that think, hey, if Brock could look the way Brock did, and Kyle's this offensive genius, well, the guy you took number three overall with all the physical tools and the size. Yep. He could look just as good as that or better. And so why like why isn't he getting this opportunity? So I, I think I think it's more that than maybe a lack of belief in Brock Purdy. J D in for Dibs all week. Willard and Dibs, glad you're with us. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy. Where did the excitement for Brock Purdy go? Uh Xfinity Mobile Text Line available. Twitch and YouTube. Thank you so much. For being here. Powered by First NorCal Credit Union. We appreciate all of you always for watching the show and all of your comments. This was the center of my Jimmy Garoppolo opinion for years. I never thought Jimmy Garoppolo was a quote-unquote great quarterback. And I have no idea what the future for Brock Purdy holds. But I do reject the thought that you just sort of expressed that many fans have. I know you're not necessarily saying this, but many fans have. And, and, and this is one thing I'd like for everybody to wrap up right now and put in the trash. Well, if Brock Purdy can do that, then why can't Trey Lance do that? There's only one answer to that question right now today. The answer is because Brock Purdy is better than Trey Lance at football right now, today. 
he's better. And it's not even a tiny bit close. And this was the center of my Jimmy Garoppolo opinion for years and why I got labeled the you know Jimmy's biggest supporter throughout uh, <laughs> the, the Bay Area media. You can't just be a guy. And because Kyle Shanahan's here, that means you're allowed to go succeed at quarterback. I've always rejected that thought. I think there's data from the ceiling to the floor to show it. You can't just be the quarterback of the 49ers, and because Kyle Shanahan's calling plays, that means you're good. It's been disproven over and over again. Nobody not named Jimmy has ever won in a 49er uniform with Kyle Shanahan as the coach until Brock. That's true. Until Brock. And so you've got to give those two guys, you can think whatever you want about him. you got to give those two guys that. You have to give them that. You do, and I am not saying that Trey Lance, just to be clear, should be you know, better yeah. than Brock Purdy yeah. because of where he was drafted and the physical tools and, and all those other things. But I, I also do think, I think once they get to Pittsburgh and, and week one, and the regular season is upon us and everything gets fleshed out as to who the backup quarterback is going to be, that, that 49er fans are going to be excited. I wonder if part of it is, and I think our our, our guy Grandy was was mentioning this in, our, in the chat, some of it could be the fact that, hey, it looked like Garoppolo was the guy, and then Garoppolo really wasn't the guy. Like, the you know, for the next decade. Right. It looked like... Purdy, I mean, it looked like Trey Lance was supposed to be. Now, he never played like it because he never got the opportunity. But Trey Lance was then the franchise quarterback. Now, Brock Purdy's the franchise quarterback. And it's like, well, you know, none of the if, – if Jimmy Garoppolo really was that dude, right. he would still be here. Well, I guess it, it, it depends on what question you're trying to answer you know, right now. You don't want to go on. Wow. Too fast. Yeah, that's fine. I Like – Boy, you don't do want to we, say I love you too well, soon. Well, you're getting a, I would right, but you're getting <laughs> ahead of yourselves. No one's proposing. No one's proposing. Brock Purdy has earned another set of dates. No one's asking for marriage. Brock Purdy's not even allowed to ask for a contract for another 2 years. You've got nothing to worry about. There's no commitment here, okay? It's like it's, signing up for a new credit card or whatever. Like you did just this is interest free for a while. Is there any part of you, Mark, that looks at Brock Purdy? And I know the circumstances are different, yeah. and you can lay out all the differences. I'll, I'll let you do that as part of your counter to this. But is there any part of you that looks at what Brock Purdy did and thinks back to 2017 and Jimmy Garoppolo going five and zero with a with a one and ten team? Of course, and they married Jimmy Garoppolo in that off season, right? But they don't have to do. I guess that's what I'm getting at. We're sort of. Uh, I feel like a lot of us are trying to answer different questions. Okay, nobody's asking you. Do you believe in Brock Purdy for the next seven years? Well, do I you- don't. I don't think that that. Like, if you're asking that question, you're fully in the right to be like, I don't know. I have no idea. But do you think he can be a Super Bowl winning quarterback? I do. And the only reason I do is because the only time we've watched him, he he was one game away and then he got hurt. He was one game away from potentially being in the Super Bowl. Or maybe I'll even ask it this way. Do you think the 49ers are trying to do something that a lot of franchises have been unable to do, which is win the Super Bowl without a superstar franchise quarterback i mean i get I, I guess by definition or do they need they him are. to play to that level yeah they try they like they're trying to win the super bowl and and they're trying to do it without people named mahomes allen and burrow so yeah i guess by definition they are i don't think that's what they're setting out to do by any stretch i just like that the, the question if you're trying to answer is brock a star is brock worthy of like let's commit for five years you're answering a question that doesn't need to be answered. The question right now is simply, um, who's the starting quarterback right now? And, and, and the race is, is, is not even close. And actually, maybe, maybe I could ask that a different way. Is, are, are, are you encouraged by what you saw last year? That's all you need to be. Yeah, he. Are you encouraged by what? Because some have my my ear, and I know you. You sort of said maybe I'm overstating it, and that's fair. I do get stuck in the in the social media echo chamber sometimes, but I hear what went from excitement 
and encouragement and just like disbelief over this story developing. And then one injury later, we get to an offseason and Trey Lance stuff starts swirling and UCL talk overtakes everything and Darnold comes in and all this discussion has seemingly led to a spot where people have lost their excitement and encouragement. Brock Purdy's done nothing bad. Like, not one thing. No, if anything, he's he's ahead of schedule. Right, and people have worked their way into a thought of of negativity um, and, and disbelief simply about whether or not Brock Purdy can go out and just be a good NFL quarterback this year for an upcoming regular season. Well, and how much of that is the fact that some believe that Brock Purdy overachieved in the eight games that he played last year, and it's not going to look like that this like There's no way it's going to look like it did last year. What I'm playing the, devil's advocate again. Yeah, I'm not, okay, I, so let's go there. What would, what, would, what would lead someone to that thought? And I, by the way, I already know two of the answers. Well, a lot of picks were dropped. Never seen a quarterback not have that be the case. A lot of uh, completions were dropped as well. Um, and then the other thing is, well, the defensive coordinators are going to adjust. Yeah. Well, that, that, that one's in oh, something to that one, maybe. Oh, oh, okay, except for that, I, I would say a defensive coordinator is usually attacking a scheme more than an individual. I'm not a defensive coordinator, but um, I don't think people are like looking at most quarterbacks in the NFL going like, oh, there, there's these glaring weaknesses that, uh, that, that we can attack on him as an individual. I do know that the Seahawks defensive staff had two cracks at him. They had two cracks at him. How many points did they end up scoring against the Seahawks in the playoffs? How many well, points did they get? I can't even remember it. it. It was a lot, right? I think so. It was north of 30. I think so. It might have been north of 40. What was the final score of the Seahawks playoff game, Grandy? What was the final score of that game? 41 to 23. Okay, there you go. that was a defensive staff who had its second crack at Brock Purdy. 41 points. Boy, they figured him out. Good thing they had tape on him. I just, can someone, I, everyone's looking for evidence of him being great. Can someone tell me what's the evidence of him sucking? Where's the evidence? Well, there's no evidence of him sucking yet. But, and I don't know that we want to go down this rabbit hole yet. But sure I we was, do. It's but, only 246. But I was thinking about all kinds of time. I, just a, this thought that popped into my head today preparing for the show. Niners go to Pittsburgh week one, and I was thinking about last year. I know you were in Chicago. Yeah. I was in Chicago. Yeah. And what if Brock Purdy plays poorly game one? And like a very plausible scenario. Totally. Oh, the absolutely. The Niners go to Pittsburgh yep. and lose week one at Pittsburgh, one of the toughest places to play in the NFL. Tough Pitt- place. It's actually, there's a lot of similarities. Ste- it's a tough place to play. Steelers are a much better team than the Bears. Well, uh, but, but same thing where you're like, the other team has a quarterback that you feel like the defense should beat that team by themselves. Yes. But that's what but the Bears But a much were. better team, much better coach yeah, team. Better, better coach, yeah, for, sure. All, all, for sure. I mean, the Bears ended up being the worst team in the league. No, the Steelers, like, in their it, look-ahead line, and the 49ers are only, like, like a three- or four-point favorite. This is not like an overwhelming the Niners are supposed to blow them and, off and the he, field. And even that is a little, seems a little Speculative, high. Speculative, yeah. A little high to me. But okay. I, I think the Steelers are probably going to end up winning. <laughs> J.D. likes the Steelers plus the points. Go ahead. For now. We'll <laughs> get back to me in 26 right. days. Right. But... It's a, it's very it's plausible that Purdy could go to Pittsburgh in a tough environment on opening freaking day and not look great, and the 49ers lose. And I started going down the rabbit hole of well, we've had all these conversations about should should there be a competition for the one and who won the two job, and nobody's ever seen Purdy struggle. But if what you're saying is true, and there is this lack of excitement or belief that what we all saw last year was 100% real, and then he put some bad tape out there, basically for the first time. Well, what are we going to be talking about have, the next day? Then we have a different conversation. Now, I would I would immediately, I would guess, and again, you don't know how it looks. Like, does he throw two pick sixes or something like that? Because everybody or, was like, monsoon, monsoon, yeah. everything's fine. Right, well, yeah, there, there's, there's nothing you can say that won't sound like an excuse. I, we know how this looks. People, if you're supposed to be good, you're supposed to look good every week. A, 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 as if we couldn't. I mean, go look at Mahomes in Indy last year. He went to Indy and he stunk. What, they score 14 points yeah. and they lost to a terrible team. Okay? 
everybody gets bad games. And 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 so I would not panic after one week, but you're damn right that people will. That people will. Is anybody expecting 17 great games from Brock Purdy this year? No. I'm not. I'm not. I would set a baseline like, let's say he was blessed with health and he started all the games. You better win at least 11 of them. Yeah. You got to win at least 11 of them. I think that's right. I think that's a fair number. You want to be a good team. You want to win the division. 10-7 and with this roster, to me, doesn't quite cut it. You better win at least 11 of them. Um, so that leaves you six games that you that, that don't go well. The one thing I will give you, where I do, I I don't think it's as dramatic as you've set it up. The, okay. the lack of uh, lack of belief, I guess, or the waning lack of excitement, the like, waning I, excitement right. compared to where it ended. It just changed. Let's say. Yeah, I, I do think it's extremely fragile. I will give you that. I think that I think the excitement is fragile excitement to where at the first sight of maybe some struggle. Yeah. It's like oh boy oh god oh no is this guy closer because because the truth is it is a it is a small sample size it, with with what Purdy did and it was a gr- it was a great sample size it's more than it's, it's small but it's not tiny it's not tiny it's not a full NFL they, season they signed Jimmy based on less they did Jimmy became the highest paid player in the NFL based on fewer games than Brock Purdy they did. No, there's no, there's no question about that. And people, and he's not the first. Like you, backup quarterbacks around the league. You get a two, three game stretch, and you pop. Somebody signs you a big old contract the next year. Matt Schaub, Jimmy Garoppolo. Like we've watched this story before. But he um, played like a quarterback last year that has the potential to be a star. I mean, like he played, like he played that way. Right. We don't know the answer to Willie or Woney, but he played that way. I would be what so. If, what if a full yeah. season this year is? Hey, he's just average. Well, then he's the, just the, Kirk Cousins, like, or he's just I, you know. I, one of the things he's that's Jimmy. Funny about he's the, closer to Jimmy than he well, is Jimmy, to Jimmy. Not so bad, but but I, I hear what you're saying. But that, but if he's closer to Jimmy, that's that may do it I for just, you. I think we're. That's no, not going to do it for a lot of no, people. No, it doesn't do it for me. I want the 49ers to win a Super Bowl, and uh, and, and and Brock Purdy last year was was Jimmy plus. Almost every time that he played, so that's the baseline now, and and I would hope that 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 continues. But I just think we get stuck, and this is a social media thing too. We get stuck in like what we think in one moment, suddenly now has to follow us for the rest of it. If Brock Purdy goes out and has a bad season, well, then the conversation changes. Again, nobody's sitting here today. I am not demanding that you believe in Brock Purdy. I'm wondering why the tone sounds different than when we left in February. Why does the tone sound different? What happened? The only thing that happened was he got hurt and freaking like a G came back from that major injury way quicker than anybody thought he could. I think some of it could also be the fact that he does not light it up at practice. He hadn't been bad by any means, but... From being out there, and today was the first day that I wasn't out there because I was coming in here to do the show with you, and and for the rest of the week. But he he is not the practice flair, practice player where you go, wow, ball didn't touch the ground one time. Mm-hmm. Like they're just moving it up and down the field at ease. I'd kind of be terrified by the defense uh, yeah, if he did. Yeah, but but that, anyway, part of that's go ahead. An elite yeah. defense, but it's just, and uh, Jimmy wasn't a great practice player right. either. Right. I, I would say from being out there the years that that he was the starting quarterback for the 49ers. But I, I think there is something to, you know, those are the accounts that people are getting. Those are the accounts that fa- that fans are getting from, you know, that's the next step. He had this injury, yeah. and he's, you know, he's, he's pretty good. Solid. I, like, he's solid I out would there. totally get it if the Niners had won a bunch of games 17 to 14 last year. I would so get it. I'd be like, yeah, I, you know what I mean? How, how excited can we really get? This is these are the 49ers. This fan base doesn't want to win games that way. We really don't. They're, we've been too spoiled through the years. We want you to be able to put up 31. And then this guy did. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. And we found a way to work ourselves all summer long into this spot where we're like, Psh, Niners got nothing but questions at the quarterback spot. They do? Really? They have a they have a strong starting point like that that they, to me that's you can't even debate like they right. have a strong starting point they know who their 
starting quarterback is going into the year, and he did a lot of really good and and even great things in the opportunity that he received last year at the highest level, down the stretch of a NFL season with a team trying to make the playoffs, trying to win a division, trying to get to a Super Bowl. And he checked all the boxes every step of the way up until the point where he got hurt in Philadelphia and the whole thing fell apart. So I'm with you on that. It's it's like I'm with you on because again we talked about this yesterday. I'm very all right. The next thing is week one. Like let's figure out who the backup is going to be in week one. Like I'm I'm very we're taking it one game at a time. I'm not going to say he should be benched if he doesn't play well week one. I think he's earned more than that at this point, especially with the Rams being the week two game. But like. I'm more just stay in the moment guy. Yes. On this thing. That's actually all I... And in the moment, you should be excited. Right. Right. In the moment, you should be excited. Okay. 